In this video, we are going to start with Cartesian x, y, z coordinates and see what the parameters of a spherical coordinates are. Finally, we drive the unit vectors for a spherical coordinate system. Suppose that we have a point in this space. We can define three perpendicular axes x, y, and z to define the point's location relative to them. This point can be specified by three numbers with which we can easily find its location in the 3D space. This is not the only coordinate we can use, and we can choose a different coordinate called x prime, y prime, and z prime. These are the points components on the new frame, and three other numbers can be used to show the point in the new coordinates. In this coordinate, we can define three unit vectors along each axis and write any vector based on these unit vectors. Now let's consider the same point and let's define three parameters of a spherical coordinate system. The first parameter is r, which is the distance from the origin to the desired point. The second parameter is phi and is the angle between the x-axis and the shadow or image of r on the xy plane. And finally theta is the angle of the z-axis with the line connecting the origin to the point p. Consider these two right triangles and let's write x, y, and z based on our new parameters r, phi, and theta using Pythagoras theorem. Pay attention that the vector r can be written in these two forms using Cartesian unit vectors. But the question here is how we can use these expressions to drive the unit vectors r hat, phi hat, and theta hat in a spherical coordinate. Suppose that the point lives on the surface of a sphere with radius r. Consider the plane tangential to the surface of the sphere at this point. Phi hat and theta hat are two unit vectors living on this plane, and r hat is perpendicular to the plane and therefore to phi hat and theta hat. To find these unit vectors, we can take the partial derivative of r with respect to each component to find how r changes in this direction and divide it by its magnitude to find the unit vectors. We already know r in terms of these three spherical coordinates. To find r hat, first take the partial derivative of the vector r with respect to r then find its magnitude by adding the square of all the three components and taking the square root of the sum which yields 1 because sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Now by defining these two elements we find r hat in terms of x hat, y hat and z hat. We can do the same thing for theta and find the partial derivative of r with respect to theta. This time that magnitude is not 1 and turn out to be r. So, after dividing the first expression by r, we have our second coordinate unit vector. And finally, as you can see, the change in r with respect to phi does not depend on the z direction. And the magnitude of this change depends on r and theta. So, phi hat can be written in terms of x hat and y hat. And as phi hat dot z hat is equal to 0, phi hat lives on the xy plane and is always perpendicular to z hat. So these are our unit vectors in a spherical coordinate and in the next slide I'm going to show you how they can geometrically be illustrated. Let's get back to our imaginary sphere again. As you can see, r hat and theta hat are on this yellow plane and phi hat lives on the red plane which is parallel to the xy plane. These two planes are perpendicular. Pay attention that if theta is pi over 2 or 90 degrees, we're talking about the xy plane. If phi is 0, we are on the xz plane and when phi is 90 degrees, we are talking about yz plane. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to my channel to get notified about the next videos I post. Hope to see you soon.